to being able to have great muscles you need to make your muscles fail repeatedly you know and that's how you you get to that point where you know you have a great body um so understanding you know where you are running away and where it's an opportunity to grow is 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 very critical your career is like a living breathing organism and building great careers requires nurturing them with strategic guidance hi my name is savan kapoor and i'm india's leading career coach also known as the career guy welcome to the career headquarters most comprehensive career podcast on the internet where i will bring you ground breaking insights on everything career related whether you are seeking a career abroad or wanting to switch industries whether you are entry level or a mid career professional or a senior leader i have seen it all as an award winning ceo of one of the largest and most profitable beverage alcohol companies my career spanned three continents multiple industries and provided me with an accelerated road map to the very top so if you want to build an exceptional career and 3x your paycheck this podcast is for you Welcome to another episode of Career Headquarters the most comprehensive career podcast. So this is a much awaited episode about switching jobs how smart professionals change careers. So how are you today Savan? I'm doing great. Are you excited for this topic? Absolutely. This has been a a hot topic you know we we've, we've done a lot of work in this area so and a lot of really amazing work it's helped uh, a lot of people so can't wait to get going. All right. So, um what are the reasons professionals start considering such major changes in their career in the first place? Um you know, I I think it comes down to a couple of reasons. Uh people start at some point experiencing regret. If they've had a misaligned career, if they got into a job that they didn't enjoy, because see both of these situations, a situation where you love your job but you hate your salary, it's not a sustainable situation or the other way around you love your salary but you hate your job right both of these situations are not sustainable so if you land up in a misaligned career if in in a career um that is not doing both of these things for you where you have the professional fulfillment and you make a significant amount of money then you know you will start experiencing dissatisfaction and that dissatisfaction accumulates over time and this is one of the reasons you know people start to have even a midlife crisis you know at some point they feel is this all there is right is this everything that i'm going to experience between now and till when i leave the planet uh so you know people start experiencing this accumulated dissatisfaction and that's what we call regret so you know regret is not having made the kind of progress that you expected to make you know you're not at that mark you're not at that point uh where you expected to be and it could be you know regret coming from not having the designation or the title it could be regret coming from not being where you wanted to be financially um you know it could be regret that you know you don't have professional fulfillment or the quantum of professional fulfillment that you wanted from your your career or your work life now what happens is if you don't know how to handle this this regret lands up uh you know turning into anxiety it lands up turning into a feeling of desperation that you are not future ready that you will not be able to uh you know uh take care of the responsibilities that you shoulder in the various roles that you play in your life you know you play the role of being someone's child you know you're a son or a daughter uh you play the role of being a parent to someone you know you have children of your own um so you know especially when it comes to those very close bonds those family relationships you have certain responsibilities you know uh, especially in our culture parents want to make sure that they can get their children married they can get their children educated you know these are some very common goals across humanity and certainly in our culture they you know hold a tremendous amount of value and meaning uh you know fathers saving for their their daughters or their sons wedding um and and you know uh 
putting money away to to get them educated and, and the world is it's not getting any cheaper to live in you know today children want a laptop and they want the gadgets and the phones and all of that it's become a necessity of life i mean you don't need to go fancy but you need to have one so you know expenses are going up and all of this can give rise to a tremendous amount of anxiety uh unable to fulfill the responsibilities that you will be held to the standard that you will be held to and please understand that this regret and anxiety express themselves in different intensities for different people and you know these are the root causes that then express themselves as symptoms so the symptom could be your bored you want to change you're disengaged you know you're victimizing your own self that why did it happen to you you know you you have a bad boss or you you're working for a company that does not give you growth opportunities or you're working in a very politically charged environment you know you these symptoms will start to come up and a lot of people they don't have the personal development or the awareness uh to truly introspect is it an opportunity to grow or is it an opportunity to run away from because the human mind wants to take the path of least resistance and unfortunately because this is not taught to us formally a lot of people run away from this taking the least path the path of least resistance without the introspection or the reflection required so as i was i think i was explaining this in in, a, in a, uh, another one of our episodes where you know your growth will only happen on the boundary of support and challenge so if you go to the gym and you're lifting weights uh you know you you've gone for three sets but it's that last two or three repetitions you know uh where your muscle is failing it's refusing to lift the weight any longer that's where your muscle is tearing and that's where it's going to you know come back stronger and bigger and and more powerful um so failure is the precursor to success to being able to have great muscles you need to make your muscles fail repeatedly you know and that's how you you get to that point where you know you have a great body um so understanding you know where you are running away and where it's an opportunity to grow is 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 very critical and i feel this is you know why people run away they 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 adopt that path of least resistance and they and they run away from a situation and they look for solace in the next thing and then in the next thing and then in the next thing uh but you know a lesson in life is not going to leave you till it has taught you what you need to learn and uh, this becomes an escape mechanism so you know the root cause is the regret or and the anxiety and this expresses itself as these symptoms and people run away without reflection and that is what leads to making these drastic changes um and and i feel that it takes a certain amount of engaging with personal development to be able to break this cycle and it's very important because you know these are problems that go through generations children are not going to do what you tell them to do they are going to do what they see you do right so you have to be a role model in your own life uh you know to the people who are depending on you so this this, this is a very important topic and i a lot of people land up attempting this topic without the awareness or the guidance or the hand holding that is required and it only leads to deeper disappointments so the most basic challenge that most professionals face when they want to switch careers is that they don't have the relevant experience in the new industry of function so what can they do to overcome this um uh, see this is a fundamental road bo- roadblock to to being able to switch careers successfully um <coughs> and we call this the permission paradox where you know you can't get the job without having the experience and you can't get the experience without having the job and it impacts so many people you know it impacts so many people um it, it, it's very important to understand that the real issue here can be solved but only if you understand the types of shifts 
okay, and the difficulty of the shifts uh, that lie in front of you. So there are three types of shifts. Okay, uh, the first shift is changing industries. Okay, and that's a relatively easy shift to make. The second shift is changing functions. Now that's moderate, moderately difficult. That's slightly more difficult. And then the third shift is changing both industries and functions. And that is the most difficult of all shifts. See, please understand that industry functions, you know, they apply, functions apply to most all industries. Sales, information technology, marketing, operations, human resources, accounts, finance, R&D, product development, supply chain, these will cross multiple industries. They exist in FMCG and retail, they exist in um, you know, oil and gas, they exist in renewable energy, automotive, telecom, um, you know, metals and minerals, uh, pharmaceuticals and healthcare. So these are you know, functions that will go across multiple industries. And developing industry knowledge is much easier getting involved with the specifics and understanding the, the behind the scenes of how an industry operates is relatively easier uh, versus developing functional knowledge. So for example, if someone wants to go from um, product development to supply chain, okay, now the knowledge that you need for product development, okay, is very different versus the knowledge that you need for supply chain. Supply chain may include, you know, calculating shipping and freight rates and understanding the imports and exports process, customs, bonds, you know, bonded warehouse, all of these things. So it's, it's a very different ball game versus product development, which is where you're trying to understand the needs, you know, of customers. Like for example, when you buy a drill, do you buy a tool or do you buy the ability to make a hole in the wall, right? So uh, anticipating a, 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 a tribe or a, a consumer's need is what product development is all about. Whereas supply chain is all about efficiency and how you can get product from point A to point B in a more efficient manner. So the functional knowledge required in both of these areas is, is very, very different. And this is truly the value of education. So when we go to college and we study a particular discipline, we go very deep into that, that discipline. And that opens that door. You know, it opens the door to be able to create a career or build a career in that functional discipline. Now, this is a little harder to do because 10 years into your career, if you want to shift from finance to sales or from supply chain to product development or, you know, from operations to marketing, the functional knowledge that you will require to be able to make this shift is going to be very different. Right? And it's going to take some time before you acquire that baseline where you can contribute in that function. So a functional shift is a little more difficult. Uh, the third shift, which is the most difficult, is an industry shift and a functional shift. And the, the issue here is that you are dealing with two variables. So you need to create an accelerated dual learning plan. Okay, You need to create a baseline of experience, interaction, involvement with the industry and with the function, right? So there is a, a set of customized strategies that we use. There's a, there's some strategies are direct strategies like getting the credentials, demonstrating the competency, okay? To be able to open those doors. Um, and some are indirect strategies. One of the indirect strategies is masquerading as the leader. You know, you'd rather ask for forgiveness than ask for permission. Nobody else is leading the initiative and you just take the initiative to start leading that, that particular area. It can work in the certain circumstances. In certain circumstances, you can get a bit of a slap on the back of your hand. So, you know, there are a multitude of direct and indirect strategies that are used in combination, very specific to the situation that a working professional is in to create the right career switch. So if it's a complicated shift like shifting industries and functions, then, um, you know, for, for those kinds of, of, of shifts, it, it requires a very deep dive. It requires a very deep dive and it's going to be a, 
six, eight, ten month process. It's not going to happen overnight. This is not something that you will solve in a, a couple weeks or a month or, a, or even a quarter. So you need to approach it by design. You cannot approach it from just a place of desire. Um, so, you know, I, I, would, I, I would urge people to engage with this area with their eyes open and not just come at it that, you know, I, I'm bored now and I want to shift and I'm just playing the game blind. All right. Thank you. Um, so how does a powerful personal brand help professionals while they're switching careers? Uh, how does it help them get the most promising opportunities? I, I understand where you're coming from because, you know, I, I think it's very important uh, to build a, a powerful personal brand, especially in today's day and age of connected uh, technology. See, human connection um, is weakening, but human communication is growing. You know, we have access to more information than we can process. Um, and I think uh, it, it, the the share for someone's, the fight for someone's share of mind is becoming more and more intense. There is so much content out there that to be able to get someone's attention is becoming harder. And what personal brands do is they help anchor you in someone's mind. They get you that attention. Um, it's, it's a beautiful thing to invest into because it's going to pay dividends over a very long period of time. Um, so, See, most powerful personal brands, they, they showcase humaneness, they showcase vulnerability, they showcase good and bad, failure and victory, right? They showcase that rebound, right? Uh, and who doesn't have that in life? They are not insincere, they are not disgenuine, uh, ingenuine. Um, so, you know, they have to come from a place of tremendous reality. You know, this ability to reinvent yourself needs to be uh, a part of your personal brand. And, you know, we are in an industry where we are creating content all of the time. And I, I just want to mention a few things that I feel uh, help bring a personal brand or content in general to life in a beautiful way. So one of the things that has worked well and works very well um, for, for people who are wanting to build a personal brand is the concept of social currency. See, we share what makes us look good. So if you have the opportunity to meet a celebrity, let's say you get to meet John Abraham or Shah Rukh Khan or you know some popular celebrity uh, and you get the chance to take a photograph with them, what do you do with that photograph? Put it up. Put it up. Put it up. Yeah, or put it on social media, share it in your WhatsApp groups, right? So you're going to let people know that you had the opportunity to engage with someone who makes you look good. This is the kind of company you keep, right? So social currency is a very powerful concept. Uh, it's that leveraged equity of someone else's brand. Um, so, you know, the more you can put yourself in situations where you can leverage social currency, uh, it's an easier way. It's a shortcut to being able to build uh, a brand. Um, another thing to keep in mind is environmental triggers. So if I ask you the question, when do you think of Kellogg conflicts? Do you think of it in the morning or do you think of it at night? Morning. Right. It's breakfast cereal, right? So naturally you think of it in the morning. So somebody had actually done research and they had looked at Twitter mentions of Kellogg's breakfast cereal and they saw a huge spike at around between 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. in the morning. Right, breakfast time. So it's an environmental trigger. So you can design the environment around a brand, maybe a personal brand or a product brand. You can design it where these environmental triggers can help accelerate the strength, intensity, and power with which a brand is being built. So for example, in the wine and spirits business, we used to see that, you know, all brand building activities such as this, um, you know, in the evening time have a much greater impact because that's where you want to come back home, you want to have that glass of wine or, you know, you want to have a drink or something like that. Uh, similarly, if you look at a product like Kit Kat, okay, now it was a great product, 
but the sales were normal, they were ordinary. And their marketing people came up with this campaign, have a break, have a Kit Kat, right? Sales jumped 400% because they associated the consumption of Kit Kat with taking a break, right? So it was a very powerful campaign entirely based in the concept of environmental triggers. Uh, the third thing that I'd like to point out here is brands and people, people as brands, they connect emotionally, right? So it needs to create emotional arousal, right? Um, and negative emotions can create emotional arousal and positive emotions can create emotional arousal. But it needs to be high emotional arousal. It cannot be low arou arousal. So if you look at negative emotions like anger or anxiety, they can create very high emotional arousal, right? But if you look at uh, a negative emotion like sadness, it doesn't create very high emotional arousal, right? Uh, if you look at positive emotions like awe or um, you know amusement or excitement, they can create very high emotional arousal. They can get you to follow a call to action. Whereas uh, contentment, which is a positive emotion, doesn't create very high, high emotional arousal. You know, it, it settles you. So brands connect emotionally. I remember when the Pulwama attacks happened, uh, I was part of the Madras Management Association here. And uh, uh, the, the, the chief there had invited me for a talk where, you know, the, the soldier, um, I think it was, his name was uh, Commander Abhinandan Vartman. He had landed behind enemy lines and then, you know, he was a prisoner of war in Pakistan. And after days he was released and came back and he was, you know, being glorified by the whole nation. Very deservedly so. So his father was uh, giving a speech about this whole experience uh, at the Madras Management Association. And I went over for that talk because you know, I was very inspired by this young man who in such a difficult situation acted with the right presence of mind and acted with the right uh, poise to be able to find a way back. Of course, there were other factors also that brought him back. But, you know, the fact is that he was able to come back to his motherland uh, safe and sound. Um, so, you know, I went for that speech and I had the opportunity uh, to take a, a photo with his father. And, you know, he, he was the, the parent of a national hero. Uh, it, it was uh, a brand that was connecting with all of India in a very emotional way. Right, because it helped us break through the perceptions that Indians never take action. Indians will not do anything. They'll just talk a big game, but they won't do anything. And here was uh, someone who was the face of having taken action, right, and taken appropriate action in the eyes of our fellow countrymen. So brands connect emotionally, right? When you can tap into someone's emotion, you can have a very powerful connect. Uh, with that individual and that's where you know uh, personal brands that are built on emotional experiences emotional um, pillars can have a very profound connect um, the next thing that helps is building yourself to grow so for example if you have any accolades if you have any accomplishments if you have any awards you've done some research that has been of value you've written a white paper you've gotten published you have speaking opportunities in this day and age of social media you need to merchandise all of that because it's adding value to someone right you need to you need to put it out there you don't want to be the biggest secret in your company or your industry but there is a way to do it you cannot do it which makes you come across like, you know, blowing your own trumpet. You have to do it from a place of tremendous sincerity. You have to give the right credit because we don't do anything alone. You know, it really takes a village to raise a child. So there's a lot of people who played a role in your success. And, you know, to give them that credit, to thank them for that is a wonderful and very sincere and genuine way of bringing this to light. Um, <clears throat> One more thing that helps is when you can offer someone practical value. So you must have seen a lot of these five minute hack videos, right? Mm -hmm. Kitchen hacks, bathroom hacks, you know, lifestyle hacks, all of this. Uh, the reason they've gone so viral and so uh, you know, popular is because 
they offer a tremendous amount of value to the user. I remember there was this video that first came out where this gentleman is an old gentleman uh, and he was taking corn, corn on the cob with the leaves and the husk and the silk all in it. And you know, removing the silk of that corn, those threads, it's not easy. Right? If you ever had corn by the roadside where they grill the corn and they give it to you, it's not easy to peel that, that uh, off. So what he did was he had discovered this way where he would cut off the husk and he would put the whole cob of uh, the corn, including the leaves and the silk and everything in the microwave and cook it for four minutes. And then he'd take it out and he would just shuck the corn and the entire thing would come out without the silk, without the, the leaves, everything. And it was so easy that video in the first week got 8 million hits, right? So when you can offer someone practical value, um, it makes a huge difference. It's helped someone in that capacity and that's where, you know, it, it, it can spread beautifully. And that's part of your personal brand. If you can offer value, if you can serve someone, then that's something that deserves to be shared and people will want to associate and tap into that. Um, and the sixth factor that I would give you is the power of storytelling. Brands need to be built on storytelling. Um, so information travels under the disguise of stories. You look at the epics in our religion, uh, you know, Ramayana and Mahabharat, right? They are stories. There are so many moral, powerful lessons entwined in these stories. You look at Panchatantra tales, you look at the Bible, you look at any of this. So, you know, before they buy into your idea, they're going to buy into you and you are a story. Bring the genuineness of that story to life. And when you use storytelling appropriately, you know, there's a lot more texture, a lot more personality that comes into the brand. So I feel a personal brand can be a very powerful way um, of, you know, creating that, that visibility. Um, to be able to 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 be able to leverage that the right way in making career switches, so I think I think that's worthy of consideration for people. So no one wants to run out of money while they're switching careers. This is a very important aspect of anyone's life. So how can one manage their finances while they're switching jobs? See, this is what makes a career switch very real. Um, you have to put the financial plan in place and please understand the more complicated the shift, the more time it may take. So I would advise that plan for a minimum of six to nine months, at least, if not for a year. Uh, especially if you're making a shift that, you know, where you're shifting industries and you're shifting functions. Because see, the answer to managing your finances will change based on whether you're employed or you're unemployed. Um, because see, if, if you're employed, then what it's going to primarily cost you is time because money is still coming in. You know, you have a salary from your current job. Even if you don't like your job, you feel it's a dead end job. The, the smart way to play the game is to understand that you will have to stretch yourself to put yourself in that position where you can meaningfully make the career switch. But if you're unemployed, then the primary pinch that you're feeling is money because, you know, you don't have a running income. And, you know, money is the, the, the ingredient that makes the economic engine of our life run. So, uh, you know, the answer changes slightly. Uh, but I would say you need to put yourself in that position where you can sustain yourself, your lifestyle, your expenses, even if you go frugal, you know, even if you limit your spending, don't get distracted by, or, or tempted by things that are not necessary. Uh, even then, you, you need to put a cushion in place. Um, and I would suggest, you know, putting away 15 to 25% of your salary for at least six to nine months uh, so that you have that cushion uh, you know, even though when, when you can go frugal and you can sustain yourself for that time period, the more you are able to save, the better, because there will be unforeseen situations that will pop up. And then in addition to all of these unforeseen circumstances, like for example, a lot of people in the middle of a switch, they were confronted by the pandemic. You know, they, they had offers made that were rescinded, that were cancelled, they were taken back. 
So a lot of people in advanced stages of negotiations where the offer had been accepted, everything had been finalized, they landed up finding themselves in a position where now the company is not getting back to them or they've been point out blank told that, you know, we're not going to move ahead with this because of what is happening at a global level. Um, so you, you need to have that cushion to be able to make the shift meaningfully. Uh, and then in addition to these circumstances, you, you may also encounter things like other expenses, like upskilling uh, costs. You know, you, you, certain roles may require you to have some technical certification, some project management certification, some Six Sigma certification or, or something else, some artificial intelligence course or machine learning or data science or cloud computing or whatever it may be. Uh, so you need to factor all of that in as well. See, here, um, don't change because you're unable to cope. You know, don't change because you're coming just from a place of desire and fantasy that change needs to come from a place of logic and planning. And I want our viewers to understand here that, you know, the, the concept that I practice is, is called dynamic acceptance. And what this concept is, is that if you cannot change it, you have to accept it. If, if, if it's not changeable, then you have to accept it. If it is changeable, change it, okay? And if it is unacceptable, then you need to remove yourself from that situation. Now, these are your three options whenever you are faced with something really difficult in life, right? Accept it or change it or remove yourself from that situation. Otherwise, you will just keep living in that toxic environment and you will keep complaining and blaming and victimizing yourself and you'll accumulate bitterness. So that's not the point here. Right? You don't take a problem and then add an even bigger problem to it. Right? So you're not in the right career and you keep going on in that career because you don't know how to switch and you're unwilling to get the knowledge of how to switch. Now what you have done is, in essence, you've taken a problem that you had and you added an even bigger problem to it by becoming bitter and accumulating all of that regret. Uh, because, you know, that's the nature of being able to reinvent yourself. You reinvent yourself when you learn these deep le lessons through your life experience. See, the ability to take good decisions comes from experience. And experience comes from taking bad decisions. So, you know, uh, this, this difficulty that came into your life, it came into your life for a reason. And, and the reason was that it is helping redirect you. It's helping you become the masterpiece that you were meant to be. Because these lessons in life will not leave you till they have taught you what you need to learn. Otherwise, you'll endlessly be stuck in that negative loop. And it takes some time and some repetition, unfortunately, for people to realize that they have been the biggest obstacle in their own way. A lot of people, unfortunately, don't learn even um, after burning their own hand in the fire. You know, you, you must have the capacity to be able to learn from your experience. Um, and that is where a custom plan is required, you know, to, to deploy the right direct and the right indirect, the right implied strategies to be able to break through problems like the permission paradox. Like I say, you know, if you're learning how to swim, do it in the shallow end of the pool to begin with. Don't jump into the English channel. Don't jump into an ocean, right? And that's the value of coaching. All right, so with that, we come to the end of this episode. Thank you. It was very helpful and very insightful. And uh, there's a lot more to learn. So I can only hope that every working professional watching this gets meaningful help that they so require for this very important part of their lives. Yes, yes. That's the hope. And, you know, uh, that's why we're on this mission. We want to reach a million people uh, be able to lead a meaningful career, you know, to, to find their dream job um, and, and, and build a life uh, that they truly deserve, uh, you know, 3x their paycheck, create that acceleration in their career. Because that, you know, the, the great pay that you receive, it's an outcome of having contributed irresistible value. 
you have to give first in life before that value will flow back to you. That's just a fundamental rule. You have to give first. You know, you, you have to do this before you can do this. So uh, that's what we focus on, on, on the process of helping you become that individual. May it be based in personal strategies or may it be based in career strategies. Typically, it's a combination of both. And that personal alignment, that foundation has to come before the career strategies. So once you build a strong foundation and, you know, people experience success in our courses and programs um, at, at uh, you know, differing paces. You know, some people will be able to break through in three weeks, four weeks. Some people will take a couple of months. That's because people of different levels of personal development come into the program, right? So this is why even if you don't need as much help on the personal development side, uh, you may be much more developed. You still need to go through this because a crack in an otherwise very strong foundation will ultimately lead to the breaking of the foundation and the falling of the building. And it's very essential to understand that. People who don't understand it fall into that category where, you know, uh, you become the biggest roadblock in your own way because you've developed this intellectual arrogance where you think this is not something you need. But if you're just open-minded for a couple of months of your life, okay? So if you're going to live 80 years, 90 years, I hope you, everyone, you know, watching has a very long life. But if you're going to live that long a life, two months is nothing, right? And if that two months can help accelerate you to 3x and then you've mastered the system where you can do it at will, you need to ask yourself the question, are you worth it to yourself, right? Great. <laughs> all right. Thank you for all the gyan. <laughs> Lovely. We'll see you in the next episode. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of The Career Headquarters, the most comprehensive career podcast dedicated to building exceptional careers. If you enjoyed this conversation, please share this with someone you think would benefit from the ideas and the insights shared on this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on Spotify, Apple, Google, Overcast, Castro, or Breaker. If you want to learn more about building an extraordinary career for yourself, I invite you to come attend my free Power Up Your Career live workshop. In this workshop, I will teach you the step-by-step -step process of landing your dream job in less than 90 days. The link to register is in the description below and I will see you live at the workshop.